Hello friends, do you remember ControlNet? Do you remember having this and turning it into this and this and this and this and this again? Power of ControlNet, now updated to ControlNet 1.1 with a lot of quality of life updates. Let me show you how to install it, what's new and how you can use it to perfect your images. Let's get started. And in honor of my biggest donor, Glenn, what's the best thing about Switzerland? I don't know, but the flag is a big plus. All right, so first let me show you how to get this installed and working properly. If you have an old version of ControlNet, you can just go inside your extensions here and you can check, here's my ControlNet, make sure that is click, check for updates. And you can see here it says Web UI ControlNet behind. Now I will just press apply and restart UI and that will update my ControlNet to the latest version. Now we can see down here I have control net and it's version 1.1 now if you don't have it installed you need to go to this web page i'm going to link this in the description below and they have an install guide here it's very easy you don't have to follow everything here you just have to take this copy paste this url go back into your stable diffusion go into the extensions tab install from url copy that in there press install when you've done that it will be in the list here now if you don't see control net here you need to just restart your stable diffusion altogether by closing down your command window and open it back up now if you have no idea what i'm talking about and you have no idea what stable diffusion is you're going to need to install that and you can follow my ultimate guide for that if you're on a computer i'm going to link it up in the right corner here right now if not, find it in the video description. The next step is you're going to download the models. And if you've followed either the link in the video description or in the link that you can see from um, the control net page on GitHub, you're going to get to this page. And what you want is the Python files here, the PTH. And you can download all of them if you want to. Now, they're fairly big. Now, not big for Stable Fusion models, but they're 1.45 gigabytes each. So if you don't have this, the space to have all of these, I'd recommend getting just a few. And then I would get the depth here. I would get the canny, this one, the open pose and the scribble. Now, it's a matter of preference, but those are the four I would recommend that you start with if you don't have the space. You don't need to download the YAML files because they will automatically download for you. When you've downloaded those files, you're going to go into your Stable Fusion Web UI folder. Then you're going to find extensions. You're going to find Web UI Control Net, models, and then you're just going to drop them all in here. And as you can see, I have the YAML files here, but I have not downloaded them manually. Stable Fusion has done that automatically for me once it has detected that I have the PTH file and loaded up control net restarted and everything. Once that's finished, you will have control net installed and it will look something like this. You will have the little tab here. You can press that and you will have most likely control net unit zero. If you want multi control net, meaning more than one control net unit here, you will have to go into settings up here, find control net down to the left. And then it says there, multi control net max models amount requires restart and i have set this to two now you can just slide this to however many you want just remember to press the apply settings and then restart once you have it set up like this this is where you will drop your input image and for this i will show you how to get that you can either get any image you want like a photograph but if you're looking for something more specific i would recommend that you look at post my art which is also be in the video description below here you can load up any model that you want you also have some pre-made scenes that you can load of, of poses and uh, here's some kind of fighting scene of people jumping and then having a sword fight. Here's someone dancing. But what I liked most about this is actually the animations. So let me show you in a bit. Let's, let's say I have this character here and I want to put this into a pose. Let's do the robot here, for example. <laughs> Anyway, let's move this around. Let's say, oh, let's do a kick here. We're trying to move up the leg and it's, oh shit, it's all wonky, whatever. It's moving around, but, oh, this is hard. 
Well, it's not super hard, but it's a little finicky if you haven't used these kinds of programs before. Now we have some kind of a kick here. Would you say that this is a good kick? I wouldn't say that this is a good kick. Yeah, you can see the foot here and the leg here. It's all messed up. So I could spend like five, 10 minutes to fix this, or I could go into the animation. So if I select this or just press the little character down here, if you go to the bottom left, you have animations and poses. So, I mean, first off, you can just pick a pose. So let's say I take this one, for example. I mean, that's great. I've now written wave. Let's take this one here. And now we get a full animation and you might think, well, what am I going to do with an animation, Seb? Well, here's the kicker. You can just drag here and find the perfect frame that you want for your animation or, well, your still image. So let's say we want this here. So now we have a perfect pose that feels alive because it came out from an animation. Let's try another one. So here we have another animation and it's just a simple greeting, but let's take this one. There we go. And now we have a pose that we might like. And what we can do is we can press the little export button up here. And what's great about this is that you can actually export to open pose. Now you can export the image directly like this, but then you would retain a lot of this in, in the depth map or the canny. With the open pose, you're going to get just the pose. You can scroll in and out like this on the side, but um, if you scroll here on the little mouse, nothing's happening. So just remember that. In the same way, if you want to move the output window, you need to select the little move here. If you don't, you're just going to rotate. So let's say we want this. We press export open pose and I have saved this as the wave. Now, if you go inside your stable diffusion and we drag the wave image in to here, you have this exact pose. Now we need to remember to click enable here on the control net. And for the model here, we're going to choose the control V 1.1, SD 1.5 or 15, and then open pose. Now there's a lot of numbers and stuff here. So first is control net, then is the version, which is 1.1. Then there is a letter, which is either P, U, or E, P is production, that's basically a final one, E experimental, I think U was unfinished or untested, it doesn't matter, P is the most final one, and then we have the stable diffusion model it works for, in this case the 1.5, as you can see down here, I have a model that works for stable diffusion 2.1, for example, and then the last here, that's the kind of model that we're working, which in this case would be the open pose. Now, since we already have the finished open pose here, we don't need a preprocessor. If you would have a photograph, you would need to use the preprocessor here. For example, open pose full or open pose. Now, the weight here, that's basically weighting the control that model. So the higher this is, the more it will follow this open post. So if you set this to lower, it will kind of follow it, but not fully. One is usually a good value here. The starting control tip and the ending control step, that's where the control net will start. So now we have it starting at zero, which is the beginning, and it ending at one, which is, well, 100%. So it's going to run for the full duration. If I set this to, for example, 0.5, then it will not run control net until 50% of the render and then for the remaining 50%, it will run control net. Likewise, you can set this to zero and this at 0.5, then it will run control net for 50%, no control net in the end. We want it for the full duration. Now, guest mode has been renamed in the control mode. You usually have it set it balanced, but you can also set my prompt is more important or control net is more important. Most of the time, you're not going to bother with the resize. Try to work with the same resolution here as you are up here. So let's try to create something. Let's say woman waving. We're going to up the weight here a little bit, and then we're going to add fault negative, Ghibli, digital oil painting, and skin enhancer. And all of these styles are the preset styles that I use. You can find them in the video description. And up the sampling steps to 25, we're running Euler a. We're not running restore faces or high res fix. However, high res fix is supported in control net 1.1. And as you can see on our results here, we have two women waving and they're very close to 
the open pose that we had in, in below here in control net. Now the hands and face are kind of messed up, but um, that's not really what we're looking for in the 512 by 512 here. We're trying to find the pose, and if we're gonna continue with the image, we would probably upscale it through an image to image pass to double the resolution and then start in painting the details. So this is mainly to show you how open pose works. Now let's say that we want to improve on our character here. So I've sent this into image to image and I've also loaded control net here. So these are similar to the settings we had before. We have the open pose, we have the open pose here and I've enabled this. Now I'm just gonna up this to 1024 by 1024. We're gonna lower this to about 0.6. I'm changing this to a slower sampler. I want the 2M cares for this and wanna up the steps just a little bit. Now, as this is a slower sampler, I usually don't use it for my first generation step in 512 by 512. But for finishing touches when I found the composition, I use this to try to get as good an image as possible. So now we are running this in 1024 by 1024. And you can quickly see, if you compare just in the generation here, this is much better. Even the hand is better compared to the left one. And the face is holding together great. Now you can't see it in full resolution yet as it's rendering, but we'll get there in a second. And even the second image is turning out much better, it seems. So we have the first one here. Face is kind of good. The hand is okay-ish. It looks like we have one, two, three, four fingers there. I think that one is just actually fading out into oblivion. This one's much better when it comes to the hand. Just some artifacts down here. So this really is the power of control net and with the update to 1.1 it will be much easier to use well not easier but we get some better results you might be asking well i've seen all this what are you talking about seb what's what's even new in 1.1 well let me quickly show you on the page here we have new features in control net extension 1.1 and it says perfect support for all control net 1.0, 1.1, and T2i adapter models. So you can even run the style adapters and, and other models in 1.1. It has support for the high-res fix, something we mentioned earlier. Now, I personally don't use high-res fix a lot. I know a lot of you like to use it, and that's fine, all good. It's just a different kind of workflow. What I do is what you just saw, text to image in a low-res, and then image to image to a high res. High res fix is basically doing that in one step. Now it says here perfect support for, well, basically mask. So something I enjoy, which is in painting, now has control that support. So that's a great feature. They have something called pixel perfect mode. And that's the little button. If you go back down here, it says pixel perfect. And that's if you have, for example, something that's different in size to what you're trying to do, can fix the pixel perfect thingamajig here. And yeah, they write here. Now, if you turn on pixel perfect mode, you do not need to set pre-pressor resolutions manually. The control that will automatically compute the best annotator resolution for you so that each pixel perfectly matches stable diffusion. And that's mainly for this, let's say we have the canny here, for example, the resolution here. Now our image is 512, so it doesn't matter, but if it's not. And it says user-friendly graphical user interface and pre-processor preview. We reorganized some previously confusing UI like can canvas with height for new canvas, etc. And I agree, this was confusing. I made an error in my first control video, and I'm sorry if you've been um, following that particular advice. And they changed a couple of bugs in the guest mode, etc., etc. And by the way, here's a quick example of the guest mode. So here's, here's an input. If you have control net mode balanced, it's kind of listening a little bit to the prompt, a little bit to control net. If you control mode, my prompt is more important. You see, it's a stylized prompt. And in control mode, control net is more important. It listens more to, well, control net and control net input. Now let's say you have a photograph or, well, doesn't matter anything. You can use that for your control net as well. Let's download this image here. We're gonna reset everything, hop back into our text to image. We're gonna drag our control net image here. We're gonna enable. We're gonna set this to canny. We're gonna activate pixel perfect here. We're gonna load the canny model there. And we're gonna have, let's have beautiful Studio Ghibli house in auto. 
I'm gonna up the weight by control arrow up. We're gonna load the same as before. We're gonna load the Ghibli, digital painting, and the default negative. Let's run four images here, and we are generating. So now we have our four results. We have the preview of the, the canning model. So this is the, what control Net uses. Let's look at what we had here. So these are our results. Let's take take this one here. I'm gonna send that to image to image. Again, we're gonna up the size, change it to Keras. I'm loading my styles again. Now, if you have the styles up here, you don't need to reload them. And for the image to image step, you don't have to use control Net again. So this time we're gonna skip that. And here we have our finished image of the house. And if you compare that to the original input here, I think it's pretty good, pretty cool. Now you can get more or less close to the input depending on the settings you have below. Anyway, I hope you had fun and I want to thank the sponsor of this video, which is Post My Art for, um, first of all, helping me with the channel and my videos and also for supplying this great resource for users. Having this together with ControlNet really is very powerful. I hope you had fun in our little video here. As always, have a good one and hiya!